Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We are back from Denver. The Yankees have COVID. Jock is a brave, and we're going to talk about who's going to do good. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. His name is Trevor. And that dude is BBD. And we are so excited to start talking about baseball again in the second half of this season. Which teams are going to be good? Which teams we have faith in? Which teams have hard schedules? Which teams have good schedules? We're each going to choose a team on the outskirts Mm. that we think may be in. We got a lot to discuss, Jack Peterson trade, and at the end of the show, we'll do a little recap of our trip to Denver for the people interested in that, because it was a blast. Most importantly, this show is brought to you by DraftKings. It's brought to you by Jordan Jones. It's brought to you by Kurt Fagelman, Mm. River Fagard, Fagard, Bryce Livingston, Carl Greenblatt, Dylan Hilling, a lot of double L's in that name, Greg Myers, Matt, Tim Copeland, Eric Mills and Will Chalker. Will double L, mm-hmm. Mills double L, Dylan double L's, Hilling double L's. Four sets of double L's from our patrons today, and um, I don't know. That's just analytics on the names that I read. Trevor, how are you doing? You know, James, Jacob, big big dong. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be home. We did have a great Denver trip, but you know how it is after a, a work trip or a vacation. It's nice to be back in your own space. Um, I ran 10 miles yesterday and drank probably 200 ounces of water trying to get my body back into fight and shape. So I'm on that road uh, now because Denver I mean I didn't keep count, but I probably drank like 10 beers a day in Denver. Wow. Like oh. So a lot of calories for this guy. Um, but I'm back now. I feel good. How are you guys doing, Jake? Jacob? Uh, opposite of you. I mean, I ate clean, uh, drank yeah. mean. No, I I feel fantastic. Um, you sound like shit. Still. That's part of it. That's definitely a part of it still. Um, How do you lose your voice for... Like you, you lose you lose your voice so quickly, and then for so long. I just leave it all out on the field, man. I, uh, you know, effort has never been the question with me, except at my last employer. That was a huge issue. Um, <laughs> but man, it was it was it was good being back in Denver. Uh, love me some Menver, and yeah, I mean, getting home, resetting the engine. I'm ready to do it this weekend. Uh, so we're not, we're not. Because no All Star game, but enjoyed watching the Yankees play last night and excited to get into the second half, man. Jim, you've you've got a pretty I mean, you've got a pretty boring couple days coming up, right? Good relaxing comeback. I have a relaxing day today and tomorrow, actually, because the move got pushed until Monday, which is bullshit, and I don't think they should be allowed to do that because right. we have to like like pay more and we had people coming out to help us move and stuff. And now we're can't move into our new house until Monday, but then Monday is going to be a crazy day. And then, yeah, but I'm down the shore right now at my parents' house at the beach. So I love this seat. Cause I get to watch people just walk to the beach. Like this couple, mm. he's carrying two fishing rods and she is, ca- she is dragging the wagon with all the chairs and all the supplies. And now he's handing her the fishing rods. Nope. And she handed him the wagon and that's better. Just take everything, mm-hmm. dude. And let her be like, you know, just enjoy her walk. Anyway, I like people watching. And then as soon as we end this episode, I'm gonna go jump in the ocean and relax for today. Mm. And then I think tomorrow is full relax mode. And then uh, Sunday, Monday and the rest of the week are going to be absolutely crazy. Love that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, I wanted to say something. I forget what it was. <clears throat> Jake, we we do have maybe a little spoiler, uh, like uh, another big thing for talking baseball in five weeks. Well, one of its w- one part of it's guaranteed, Trev. So like it is, and Jake and I, uh, and Zach and BBD, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, have something on the itinerary. So it doesn't stop like that on the flight home. 
Sam, who uh, was a huge part of planning everything, we were like, okay, what's that? What's the next event? So it is, it is a uh, nonstop. It, it, it felt like a finale and it's just a halfway point. So yes, I'm getting loose, baby. Right. <clears throat> we got our first trade mm. as soon as the events died down and everything happens. We get our first trade. Jock Peterson goes from the Cubs who told us they were going to sell and he goes to the Braves. So it's the first 2021 trade chip or twi- domino to fall for the Cubs. Uh, a lot of people say Darvish was the first one, but. Jock goes to the Braves, and before we talk about this, I got to tell you about this cool new 13-episode YouTube series that's coming out on the Hall of Fame Connections. It start dropping every Wednesday, and they take a look at the Hall of Fame's connect collection from, <clears throat> from a new and exciting angle with each episode telling a different story of how two seemingly unrelated artifacts in the museum's vast collection connect to each other, crossing through the generations of baseball. Sounds pretty interesting. Each two-part episode features both a narrative storytelling element that weaves through the history of some of the museum's most iconic artifacts and the Hall of Fame's curators conversing about those artifacts and stories with MLB Network personalities, Carlos Pena um, and Lindsay Berra, the granddaughter of Hall of Fame catcher Yogi Berra. So uh, support for the series was provided by a Market New York grant through I Love New York and New York State Division of Tourism as part of the Regional Economic Development Council Initiative. And uh, to stay up to date with the release of each episode of Hall of Fame Connections, follow the Baseball Hall of Fame social media channels at Baseball Hall on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And check out the Hall of Fame Connection YouTube series today on YouTube. I like history. I like the Hall of Fame. I like baseball. I'll probably check that out. The Oops. link for all that's in the bios of of this episode. So, Hall of Fame. That's cool. Hall of Fame. Whatever. Just that'll be a <clears throat> that'll be another trip we got to do soon. So, Jack Peterson goes to the Braves. Um, who was the return? It's some really fun name, like Bryce Bat. Bryce Ball, I think. Bryce yeah, Ball. Bryce Ball. Love his game. Big boy, so six six two forty. Mm. And it's just a straight up one for one, right? Heads up. Or is there more? I think that's yep, it. The money the money's all coming over to Atlanta. It's not much left. I think they said it was around 1.9 mil left on that. And then they're on the hook also for a potential um, buyout because Jock does have a club option for next year as well. So it could end up being uh, – if he comes over and does well, I think it's a $10 million club option. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they pick that up if he balls out. And sure. Bry- Bryce Bat. Um, nope. Yep. No. Well, he's a he's a hitter, not a pitcher. So I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him Bryce Bat. He played for Danville. How about that? I used to live there, and uh, in 2019, lit it up in the minor league. So there you go, Cubbies. Yeah, and it, you know, hey, if you're looking for Jake's scouting report on Bryce Ball, which I've really sunk my teeth into, I don't know. He's a walk power guy. So it it's you know they're taking a shot on a big boy, uh, if he can hit a little bit. I mean Jock, like you're saying, is essentially a rental with the potential to to be there for next year too. I mean the other thing that's on the deck here is that if the Braves eat it for the next couple weeks, is that Jock could be flipped again. So uh, like, I think that's very like like we're talking about with a couple teams coming up later in this show. Uh, a huge two-week period for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, uh, I think Buster only uh, tweeted out this morning that the Braves, you know, take a dive, but Jock has two good weeks. It, it, this is part one, and then it's going to be <laughs> Bryce Ball for another minor leaguer or something like that. Um, I don't know. I, I think this Braves front office is too keyed in on – their window, which is good. I mean, that's what you want. But it, it's been a nightmare of a season. So, yeah, I, Trev, I saw you do the little head shake. It, they would have to be so bad these next two weeks, which, hey, uh, they could be, but uh, I don't know. Well, I knew this was going to bleed into my segment on schedule watch. Bleed. But the Braves have the toughest second-half schedule of any team on the outskirts that I, I looked at all of them, and the Braves have – By far the toughest. And the next two weeks, they play three against Tampa Bay, three against San Diego. Then they go at Philly. Then they go at New York Mets. Then Milwaukee. That's their next five series. Mm. 
Tampa, San Diego, Philly, away, Mets, and Milwaukee. So, yeah, by the time they're done with that stretch, they might be so far out of it that Jock gets <laughs> traded again to another contender. And I think that's why they pulled – but they pulled the trigger on this so early because they know that stretch is coming up and they know that that's their season right there. Those next five series, that's are we contenders or are we not? Mm. That's it's tough. And then, dude, if they do get through that stretch, those five series against those teams, they have two West Coast trips left on their schedule. And one of them's a three series West Coast trip. So the Braves have the toughest second half schedule of all the teams that are not like solidly in the playoffs right now. That's what I looked at. And we'll do more on that later, but I do think that's why they pulled the trigger pretty early on Jock. And we've seen we've seen teams do this, you know. The Twins picked up Lance Lynn and then flipped him, or was it Jaime Garcia? I, I, I believe Jaime they traded Jaime. one start flipped again. Yeah. They did that. We did that when I was there with um Jose Oh my gosh, I'm going to forget his name right now. Oh my god. Cuban dude can just absolutely rake lefty. He's old. I'm. I can't believe I'm forgetting right now. Not Jose. I was gonna say Jose yeah. Morales, but that's another former teammate of mine. Um, okay. What year? Continue. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Continue. I'll figure it out. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, well. You give your. Yeah, I was kind of waiting for your opinion. If I'm being full, full disclosure. On Jock and and what? Just all of yeah, it. Yeah, on the trade. We okay. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit on Chris's IG live. You know, Jock. It's not enough. Obviously, good player, but it's not enough for the Braves to break through um, to go and catch the Mets, who I believe are going to be extremely active. So, to me, if it's like, hey, let's get Jock and see how we do over the next week, that's like the, that's not a good plan, and I'm not in favor of that. Like, if you're going to go get Jock, and you are still not because you are in this window and you're still not giving up. Uh, which, like, I wouldn't even fault them for giving up for the amount of shit they've gone through this year as an organization. I mean, you're losing your best player to an ACL injury. You bought into a guy who was a piece of shit, so he doesn't even give you anything. Uh, your top pr- pitching guy who you thought was going to be back this year ruptures his fucking Achilles. Like, it's it's been a horrible year for them. So I wouldn't even fault them for saying, like, let's retool for 2022. But if they're signing Jock, you better go get somebody else. You need more help. Man, and yeah, it's uh, I, I just went to the fan graphs page, the roster resource, and where their lineup was to where their lineup is, it, it's it's nutty. I mean, right now they have it listed. If if the Braves were to play tonight, which they're supposed to, uh, they say it would be Jock, Freddie, Albies, and you can mix those three up, sure. Austin Riley, Orlando Arcia, Dansby, Guillermo Heredia, and Kevin Smith. Your Atlanta Braves. I mean, that is not the team that was supposed to be playing for the Braves this season. So uh, that's brutal. And I, I kind of like the way now I'm starting to get roped into it, combining what you said and what you said. Both of you guys, I'm about it. What if this is just the start of the NL East, like, check raise? Like, Trev, you said that the Mets, they're going to be players. Like, the Mets are going to make their piece. You think my guy Dombrowski ain't going to make a move? Like, I think this might start the one-up festival in the NL East. I love that. I'm here for that. And then do you think – Do you think like, I like this spin zone right here because mm. you just got me into a whole different idea. Do you think Anthopolis was like, let's make a small nominal move to trigger off these big moves, then we'll bow out and be ready for 2022. These guys have given up some of their prospects, some of their capital going for it this year. Let's just make sure they like go all out and spend some spend some shit while we secretly are bowing out. Chess. Yeah. That's chess. <laughs> That's a reach. That's a <laughs> I love reach. it. I love it. Trav, I, I'm scouring through the twins transactions. Can't find anyone. I, I forgot to uh, keep checking. Um, what what year do you think so it like was? Jose Cruz Jr. Like oh my gosh, 2012, 2014. He's a, he's a stud. Oh, Kendrick he said Morales. Morales. Oh, okay. I said uh, Jose I was looking Morales, for another teammate of mine. I Kendrick was looking Morales. for J names because you said Jose, so I blew yeah. up. Kendrick um, Morales about, came over, and then we traded them like I don't know a month later. The only thing I we haven't talked about that's a, a trivial part of the jock trade that I think is fun is. The Braves were up three to one on the Dodgers. Uh, Jack was on the Dodgers 
and there's a lot of maybe history in that room and obviously there's no like hard feelings or anything trev but no what no, no. as a being in clubhouses what is it ball busting right away like there's got to be something weird about that i don't think so especially like if it's jock going to the braves you know like if it was somebody coming from the Braves to the Dodgers, then you could see like the Dodgers kind of making fun. That's a sore subject in the Braves. I know. Clubhouse. I'm saying so, Jock, can't, Jock can't go in there and just be like, uh, watch some shit. Maybe he. I'm sure Jock doesn't want to remind them of that. They're already in a bad mental space ish. So he needs to be over there and being a positive influence. And young Jock knows that. Young Jock will do fine. I'm sure you can joke about it a little bit. Freddie's probably going to say, like, you know something about it because he's freddie but you know they're there the jock's coming over he's bringing a serious mindset to go freaking win i hope they do make moves to go like and compete but they got they got a uh, quite a road ahead of them um jock oh what was i gonna say jock if you listen to um the compound ian happ and zach short dakota's podcast on drama media they talked about when Jock came to the Cubs and how he was like awesome. I mean, he like bought everyone sneakers. He was like hooked up security guard. I, I might be not getting the details exactly correct, but I know that Jock made like a very positive impact with the Cubs team and players. And they were like, he's awesome. So maybe he Love will that. inject some positivity and some fun in over there and then I'll get traded again. Closing, closing note on my end. Uh, and it ties back to, Trevor's teammate. Kendrys Morales career earnings. Three, two, Ooh. one. 70, 62 million dollars. I mean, did he ever get a big contract? 70, 62? 70, 62, yeah. No, I think he I think he's I think he's in the hundred hundreds. He is? I think he got a I think he got a deal. I think he's like right around a hundred. Ninety to a hundred. He is ten K away from the BBD special. Sixty nine million four hundred and ten thousand dollars. I was all over. Wow, him. nice job, Jimmy. I thought he got more than that. Wow. I could have been I could have been a hundred million off and would have been shrugged and said, Yeah, I don't know. I was just guessing. So I'm not gonna take too much credit for it, but I'm the smartest man alive. Oh, thirteen year career, two hundred thirteen ding dongs, good for you, Kendries. Yeah, I like Ken. He was great too. He was great. Um that year that we signed him, he sat out spring training. I think we signed him like maybe like in June. We were kinda like doing all right. And then we just we were crap. So mm. we traded them off. This is what do you think the most he ever earned in one single year was? And then I will move on. I was just looking at it, so I kind of know. Trev, your guess? 13? 12. 12. Yeah. What's the Not most only. you ever what's the most At you ever only. earned in one year, Trev? Now we're talking. Um seven something. Seven something. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I wish I would have had more seasons. <laughs> like them paychecks. <laughs> it was pretty nice. 20, 2016, Trev, you earned $7,250,000. Sometimes right. we forget. You know, we'll get you there. Fucking, we'll get your, there. Your, you your pay, got me. Your paychecks were wild for a little bit there, huh? They were wild. <laughs> Subscribe. Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Man, you signed him June 8th, traded him July 24th. Mm. Yeah. But again, great guy. And he could rake too. Do you guys remember when he hit a walk off granny and then blew out? On I think, ice? unfortunately, that's what he's remembered it's for. Not. That's changed the game of walk off celebrations. Mm. Like everyone's like, okay, hold on. Especially if you're an older guy. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Trevor Plouffe's math segment. I've been doing the math, Jim, and it's, it's mm. not as exciting as I thought it would be, but we could go over some of them. Basically, what we're going to talk about now is I set the bar at 93 wins to enter the postseason. Um, I haven't done all of them because I'm, I'm talking to you guys and trying to do this is like putting my, my mind in a pr uh, pretzel. So we could, you guys could all help out with this. Just get a calculator. It's t we are not a <laughs> math pop. I thought I could. You know, what we should do right through big this. math segment. This is what we're good at. <laughs> but if you, this is kind of what I've realized as I'm doing this. We're setting it to 93 wins. It seems to me like, and we talked about this a little bit before the show. Like, 
the playoffs are almost booked. And I know that sucks if you're hearing that and you're like you're a fan of a team that's out of it, but like I don't there's not many teams that I see are gonna do that. I know we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, Jim. Like we're gonna throw some names out there, but as I'm doing the math, it's tough. Like for instance, the Blue Jays sitting right now, and this is basically the same thing for the Yankees because they're neck and neck. The Blue Jays sitting right now are at 45 and 42. I say you got to get to 93 wins. Well, they need to go 48 and 27 over the next 75 games. 21 games over 500. You think that's going to happen? No, but you know what? I am doing hope for the hopeless after this. Yeah. So, so we'll, let me you let can me tear just... them down. I'll build them back up. So 48 and 27 for the Jays. That gets into 93 wins for the Yankees. It's just the same math. Take uh, two games off each side, 47 and 26 uh, to get to 93. So they actually have to do 21 games over 500 in less games, two less games. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either team has enough to do that. And this is this, and this is if the Rays and the Red Sox get off of their winning percentage pace and come down. So this is, uh, you know, as I've been doing this, again, like I said, like it just seems to me like if you're looking at the division, especially in, in the AL, right now you have the Red Sox, the White Sox, and the Astros. And then the two teams that are making up the wild card right now are like right on the heels of those first place teams. So their win percentages are way up. You know, there's nobody under like the A's at 52 and 40 of a 565 win percentage. The next closest one that would be competing with them um, is the Mariners at 527. So it seems to me like the AL playoffs are closed. Is that like a hot take? No. I mean, I remember I'm trying to look up the 2019 standings I, at the break because I believe the you have it, Jay? I got all that, yeah, because that, that ties into kind of what I wanted to bring into the table. So the AL in 2019 uh, at the All-Star break, uh, Yankees, Astros, Twins, Rays, uh, if the playoffs had started then, the only change would have been the Cleveland Indians were 50 and 38. The Oakland A's were 50 and 41. So so that does try tie into what Trev's alluding to is that, you know, it, in theory, because this is where my mind jumped to. It's like baseball is baseball. Something will change, and we don't know what it is, and it, it could be a 10-game winner from every side. The AL right now looks pretty locked up. Uh, in 2019, you very much had Cleveland, Oakland, the Red Sox, even the Texas Rangers were like there and in play, so at least it was a discussion. Um, the only swap at that point was the the Indians were ahead of the Athletics and the Athletics ended up passing them. Um, so it, it it's half a hot take because it's sports and there are – you know, 75 games left, so something very easily could happen. If a team has a first half like the Braves did, you know, it, it it's almost impossible to anticipate that and predict that, but it's the beauty of sports. What about the NL? <clears throat> so Because the, the, the Nationals were well, the big story, right? What do you got? Yeah, so, so I think I think what's – the NL, the only – I think 93 wins is another – Good mark for the NL. And you have the Brewers sitting in front comfortably in their division. Four games up on the Reds. I know we'll talk about that a little bit later. I think I, the Brewers are like the sleeper World Series pick. I don't know how you can't say that because they're going to make moves. And what they have, like their, their strengths right now, is exactly what you need to win in the playoffs. They have three fucking all-star starters and the back end of the bullpen. Okay, and their offense will pick up because they're going to make moves. And Yelly's only hit five freaking home runs this year, so you expect some positive regression that way. Although he that, hates that word. Is that true? Five home runs so far. Oh no. Four hundred OBP though. Three ninety nine. I'll give him that extra point. Anyway, so then you look at nice. you look at the Giants, the Dodgers, and the Padres. Guess what? Those three teams are going to be in the playoffs. Okay, and then. Milwaukee most likely. So then it leaves one spot open, and that's from the NL East. Now, I don't think we have to set the bar at 93 games for the NL East. You get the, the Mets at a 540 win clip, 47 and 40. They're sitting three and a half over the Phillies and four over the Braves. Even the Nationals are only six back. 
I could see like an 88 to 90 team, 90 win team winning this division. That's what it's going to take for one of these teams, obviously, to get into the into the postseason. So now it becomes who makes the moves. We were just talking about Jot going to the Braves. Could it be the first uh, to really catapult that division going all in? Because you have to remember, there's other teams fighting for these players. So it's not like the NL East is just going to get all these players because they need them. So it'll be interesting to see, like, the Phillies, for instance, they want to add, but like they, maybe they don't have enough prospect capital to add. Mm-hmm. You can want all you want, but if you don't have the money to buy something, you can't get it. So it's going to be interesting. Um, the NL East is, to me, the only thing that's like stopping these playoffs from being pretty much fully formed already. And I'm talking it's July 16th, which is pretty crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, with the 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 Cubs, <laughs> there's teams that are the Braves are buying, and they're like worse than the Cubs. <laughs> Which when I was looking at all the standings and stuff, I was like, oh man, the Cubs coming out of it and be like uh, announcing that they're out of it. It's kind of odd. They could they could have done the two week game uh, as well, but they're just sellers they're, right now. I, I think they're smart. I think they look up. I the agree. Doors. I agree with you. I think yeah. they're smart. I think other teams are um, subscribing to hope, and the Cubs are not. Do you think there's any chance? I'm looking at the AL wild card right now, and it's it's not sexy. What are you seeing? It's not sexy right now. I mean, Tampa is two games up on Oakland, and Oakland has the final spot. Oakland has a three and a half lead on Seattle, which love you, Seattle. No one's buying the stock. Prove us wrong. What the- Cleveland, and then so Cleveland, Toronto, and the Yankees are four and a half back of Oakland. I mean, I, I guess that is the one I'd circle. You know, we, we've we talked about Oakland a lot, like Oakland, and they usually find a way and end up in the playoffs, but that is the team that I think everyone is circling because if they could drift back and Cleveland can rack up some empty wins, if the Yankees can find anything, if Toronto makes a little pitching move, I think that that's the one I'm circling. Like, I can believe in that. The NL wild card is going to be tough. Like, the Padres or the Giants or the Dodgers would have to really slip. And honestly, it it's the Padres, who's America's team. So, I I don't know. I mean, that, that one is really tough. And, Jim, I know you've got some schedule stuff. The Cincinnati conversation is also a little fun. Yeah, yeah. We can <clears throat> let's go to it. Can you can you who is my hope for the hopeless segment coming from Jim? This is a company where I get a lot of my well-dressed Wednesday outfits from it's Sports Pets USA. Um, they are officially licensed with MLB, NBA, NFL, NHL and NC2A. What up? Pay them athletes. Uh, Jim, we got our dogs stocked. Uh, I got noodle a nice pink Yankees jersey, number one. Not a big deal. Uh, it, he kind of he steals the show in that. And, man, it, it's it's the real stuff. Like, it's, you know, some, some of these websites you go to and you're like, hey, are they licensed? What are they doing? Sports, pet, Sports Pets USA is the real deal. And with code BASEBALL, BASEBALL, you get 20% off at checkout. 20%. That's a real one. That's a real one. So they got jerseys, collars, leashes, tags, toys, everything. Go check them out. Sportspetsusa.com slash discount slash baseball. 20% off. Uh, go get some swag. I'll post, I'm will post. i going to post a noodle pic soon. It's ready. It's waiting. I got <clears throat> I got pics of my dogs in the outfit. Um, Maisie, Maisie didn't really get what was going on. Mm. I wonder if I still have these videos. Mac, totally cool about it. Kind of was like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Here you go. Mac's a chiller. Wow, with the stand. Yeah. And then that's Mac, and he's just cool about it. Uh, He's got, I think, so Maisie had that. that He's just Yankees on. Yeah. 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 Katie really likes taking their blankets and draping them over them like some type of medieval horse in a jousting competition. And Mac actually like loves it. Like he just keeps the blanket right. on his shoulders and walks around the house like I'm cozy everywhere I go. So he he likes 
being in clothes, I guess. What a sissy boy. Mm. They're going to get cut right now. Max got this uh, when his hair grows out. He gets this furrowed brow. He looks like John C. Riley. Mm. Just looks like such a like like an old bruiser of a puppy. Mm. I got to say, I know those aren't real Yankees fans because there's a name wow. next to the number. No, and... my dogs aren't real Yankees fans. They barely fucking watch. Yeah. I try to talk to them all the time about it, and they're like, can't keep up. It's ridiculous. They're casuals. Soft. Casuals. Dude, soft. Hope for the hopeless. All right. I like schedule stuff. And I went and I looked at. So just to let everyone know, if your team is currently in the playoffs, I didn't look because mm. you have a lot of hope. It's hope for the hopeless. Right. Are we all, so, we're all picking one, right? Because I've. Yeah, I'll run through the schedules, then we'll all pick one. OK, because okay. first, like this is like true hope for hopeless. Like Jake said, no one's buying stock in the Mariners. Uh, the AOS is pretty tight. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to be a Mariner fan that has a reason to watch and stuff, there's seven games behind Houston right now. They have 12 left. So if you luck into winning the first two series, you can talk about it, the dance a little bit. I don't know. Hope for the hopeless. You got 12 left against the number one team in Seattle. That's a big one. Same with Cleveland. Cleveland is eight games behind the Chicago White Sox who, who started faltering, but I don't think they'll continue to falter. Um, they have a five game series against Chicago in September, like the very end of September, a five game set. They're eight games back right now. So if you just make up some ground, get within five games before that sweep, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's likely, but there's hope where you can be like, hey, if we five game sweep them, we're tied for the division. All you got to be is within five by the time that five game set comes at the very end of September. So there's some hope for Cleveland fans. Hang on to. That's your goal. Be within five by the time we play the White Sox. It's like September teens or 20s or something like that. Toronto and the New York Yankees are both eight games back. Now, the Yankees, eight games back uh, behind Boston. We had the COVID washout yesterday, but eight games this week against them. They did a four-game set, then a three. Then the Yankees have three games against Tampa or someone else. Then another four-game set against Boston. They had they had. On the schedule was eight games against Boston in like the next 10 days. So if magically the Yankees were to be healthy, which they're not and not have COVID and be like, you know, win both of those, like take six out of the uh, eight games, you'd be right back in the fucking thing. But that's not going to happen. Uh, Toronto also has 10 games against Boston by August 6th. So Boston's getting tested kind of early where Boston, on the other hand, goes out and just beats the Yankees and beats Toronto in these 16 games that happen in the next three weeks, then Boston like kind of solidifies. They The Boston can win the division in the next two weeks. Um, Not against That's the Rays, wild. maybe, but yeah, they could, Rays. they could put, they could put the blue Jays and the Yankees just dead in the next two weeks. Boston can do that or Toronto or New York can fight, scratch, claw, win majority of those games and be somewhat in it. Um, so there's a little bit there. The uh, the Reds, this one I like a lot. I like Milwaukee. I do think they're the best team um, in that division by far and a threat come the postseason the way they're built. But the Reds just swept them going into the break to go from seven games back to four games back. And now the Reds play another three game set against Milwaukee. Now, if they were to sweep them again and I'm coming from a Reds fans perspective, hope for the hopeless. You're within one, basically at halftime. I like now, that. they only have one other series against them. They've played a lot already. So the Reds only have six games against Milwaukee, and three are happening right now. So you have to take care of business tonight, tomorrow, and the next day for this to happen um, if you want to you know, get the two points you can have. So... The Reds, this series is kind of big for them, I think. But I, I do like that, and I love that the Cubs are out of it because guess what that means? That means more easy games for the Reds. Obviously, it means more easy games for the Brewers, too, but um, I like I like that the, uh, the Cubs being out of it, I think, opens up a little bit of a hole for the Reds to kind of, in their head, say, all right, well, we're the team now that has to kind of and we- push your tackle this. What are the Reds' moves? Mm. 
Like what are they? Wise? What are they looking to do? They need a shortstop. Um, yeah. You know, they started with Eugenio over there, and now Kyle. He's been bad. We just talked about that. He's been bad this year. And yeah, and I, you know, playing shortstop ain't easy. You, you wonder <clears throat> if that factors in. Analytics can't see that. You know, Kyle Farmer right now is listed as their starting shortstop. So the Reds. From this conversation, they have to be one of the teams you circle because, uh, Jim, I'll go uh, on the other side. I'm normally not senior hopeless, but they open up with the Brewers and the Mets, who have been two of the best NL teams. So if they have a bad six days, it, their whole outlook changes again. So I don't know. I, I think if you're a baseball fan and if you're a Cincy Reds fan, you're you're circling Javi Baez. You're circling Trevor Story, uh, and you're saying – I mean, could you imagine if they got Trevor Story in, in the middle of that lineup, you got to go Story, Winker, Castellanos, Fado? Like, you know, and, and this is a team that this front office is willing to go for it. They did with Bauer. Uh, and then they kind of got screwed by the COVID season. So this is the team, and if you're a Reds fan... You obviously want your team to go for that's that's where you always end up landing. You just hope they kind of everything we just said about the Braves, how this Jock Peterson might be a half move, like you know, oh we're doing something. I don't want to beat a shot at our guy Freddie Galvis, Cincinnati Reds, great, but if when the Red shortstop trade comes through and it's not one of those kind of upper echelon guys. I think if you're a Reds fan, you're like, come on, like let's let's not dip the toe, give the boys a chance. So interested to see in the front office, like they also might let these six games decide it. Yeah. Everybody I mean, is gonna be going after bullpen help. That's the thing. Always. So it's like we're we're talking about these teams that need to make these significant upgrades. But like I mentioned earlier, like there's competition for these things. Just because you want something doesn't mean you're going to get it. Now the Reds can go out and get a shortstop, and they would still need bullpen help to be like a real, like a real player in this end of the season and then the postseason. So that's for me. If I'm at, if I'm a Reds fan, and now looking at all the statistics and stuff, their starting pitching has actually been okay. Like Sonny Gray can get back. Luis Castillo, who has been, he's been good, right? The last. Five or six starts. Turn it around. Really yes. good. Had a horrible start. Starting pitching could be okay, but the bullpen, holy crap. They need a lot of help. Man. That that Mil yeah. the Milwaukee Cincy series this weekend is the series to watch. Who's lined up for that? So it looks like they're going Molly uh Castillo Gray and the Brewers are going Hauser Woodruff Burns. So the OG um, law firm. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. The The Brewers have a, a losing record, teams over 500. They had a pretty easy schedule uh, in June so far. So I do think that the Reds-Brewers can be a fun race here in the in the Central. Uh, and I, I think that if the Brewers can trade, the Brewers have the pieces I'd rather – I'd rather have d their starting pitching and their bullpen mm -hmm. and their kind of um, almost more than anyone in the league make. I'd rather their makeup than what the Reds have, uh, which is like, you know, they got some good bats. They got some guys having great seasons. They do have some starting pitching, but not great bullpen. But see if the trades can fill some holes. But uh, all right, well, I'll keep going down and then we'll each pick our team in the East. I already told you Atlanta's schedule is so tough. They're so banged up. I, I, I like the Braves and people always think I'm like attacking fan bases and not just looking at this like the schedule and like, how could you, I will, I will firmly say, I, I, I think there's no way the Braves do anything the rest of the way. If they do, I'm incredibly happy for them and I'm interested to see how they pull it off. But my God, they have two West coast trips. One is a three game series out West. Their whole team's banged up. I mean, they're losing players like every other week. They make a trade for Jock, but they have, I mean, Tampa Bay, San Diego. Then they go, they go to Philadelphia and they go to the Mets. Um, not that the Phillies like an amazing team right now, but that's a hard fought series because they're both chasing the same thing, especially the Mets and then the Brewers. So I don't see how the Braves make it through the second half as a playoff team. 
Um, interested to see if they do, but that's tough. Philly, on the other hand, in very similar mm. spots, the Braves have a easy second half schedule. They don't have one cluster of series where I went, Ooh, that's a tough stretch. Everything's broken up by teams that are going to be out of it. Teams that are going to be sellers. Everything is broken up and they only have one West coast trip left. And it's only a two series set. And I think that's why baseball reference has the Phillies as their pick projected division winner over the Mets. Um, the Phillies the rest of the schedule. And I mean, it's just a schedule if it's not just on paper, but I was like, Oh, that, but if you compare the two, the Phillies have an easier path than the Braves to, to making, to catching the Mets. Your, your Phil's Trev. I, I mean, I've, we talked about the Braves already. I agree with you, Jim. It's it's a long road ahead for them, and I don't know. If, I don't even know if they should be doing going for it. But the Phillies, I've been saying this all along, and they've been mediocre all along. I think if you look at their what they have on paper as well, like their lineup is very long, and they have the starting pitchers. Now they need bullpen help again, which is you know people say it's the easiest thing to fix, but not when every single team is going after it. So you're telling me, Jim, that the schedule is extremely favorable for the Phillies. That makes me think between the two. Yeah. That makes me think that, yeah, like there is a shot. Like that's what I was saying. The, the NL East is open for, for business, man. And I want to believe in the Mets. And if they go get Chris Bryant, their lineup's crazy. And their pitching has been crazy. Their lineup though, for the Mets has a bunch of guys with career OPSs in the eights, and, but all of them are underperforming. I'm talking Conforto. I'm talking McNeil. I'm talking Lindor. Um, I'm sure I'm missing other people too. It's it's even Pete Alonso, he's in the eights right now, but he's still underperforming his career averages. So it's does Bryant come over and like spark everybody? Because if they start to all get hot at the same time, I don't think anybody's catching them in the in the east. So we're gonna we're gonna be seeing some trades and it's gonna change everything we're thinking right now. Like I was looking uh, at the brew I was looking at the Brewers. A roster they need a first baseman they got rowdy over there now but and they have keston he's been he's been pretty bad this year like imagine if the brewers went and got bryant and stuck him at first base we're talking it then i i think they might be fucking up there with the dodgers yeah in terms no of it's like the talent level it's gonna be really exciting i know i know we you were with us trev last year for covering the trade deadline but it was the shortened season and it was kind of bizarre but I don't know if you remember 2019, Jake, but like on trade deadline day, we were just live streaming like the whole day when the Granky news mm -hmm. came and all that. And it's a fun time. So I'm excited to go through that this year and we'll set up some live streams, some reactions and all that, like come deadline time. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Some, I want to break some news. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go into it thinking like, hey, let's let's steal some of the thunder. I, I want to. I didn't want to. I did want to put this into the ether. I, uh. I got the jock trade, um, but my person wouldn't bet our friendship on it because he, he was willing to – He uh, it, it wasn't all confirmed yet. So I just want people to know the people's source is ready. The I got some news of that uh, the Yankees are not even in the top three teams for Gallo with the Rangers and that the they're asking for big shit for, mm. for Gallo. As they should. Which I – as they should, but I mean, no, no, they asked like for Martian Plus, which is like, that's what I heard. I have no confirmation on that. I just heard. I'm asking too. I told Chris Rose that I said the Rangers don't have to do anything. They proved that last year with Lance Lynn. They just trade him in the office. Yeah, but that was him. that was dumb. That was dumb because with Gallo, they could get the offer they want now, or they could wait in the off season, or they can wait to the next trade deadline. So like, they have opportunities. If they don't get the package that they want, they won't do or it. Extend him. Just make him your guy, Texas. Uh, that's where. Well, you know, there are their organizations yeah. run poorly. Oh, I've I've the, heard. There's one other team, and this this uh, goes against what I said at the beginning, uh, where I was only looking at teams that don't have a playoff spot. But I was just interested. I was going through it. The Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants play seven games against each other before July ends. Mm. I mean, what's right. today? July 16th. So in the next two weeks, they play seven games against each other. They're one. The Dodgers are one and a half out. I mean, if the Dod, they, they can change the landscape. Of, both sides can change the landscape of that for a little bit. Um, 
before August even gets here. You know, they can split those series, or if one team takes over, you're looking at a, a change in the landscape a little bit. So, I, I we'll see. I, uh, I'll say this: we obviously had a crazy week being at the All Star Game and all that. I just got excited because these next couple weeks every year um, are going to be awesome. Because I, I mean, even the little stuff like Trev, you mentioned Keston Hura. I, I mean, you know, a huge prospect for the Brewers, broke out, then he's struggled since. And, man, like, how much are his next two weeks going to depend what the rest of the front office does? Or, you know, hey, do they wait for maybe one of those guys to come back from the Olympics and say, hey, we'll let her a roll and Todd Father. You, you want to pick it at first base for, for a couple months? Like, it, they have plays, and it's, you know, everyone wants to be in a front office. I, uh... You know, catch me, catch me on the internet at ten thirty at night, and you know I got some front office ideas, but mm. man, some of the decisions that have to be made in the next couple weeks are uh, there's ripple effects within an organization that, man, Keston her that's like supposed to be their guy. Sometimes it, there are seasons like this. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I'm rooting for him. He's a local product for me. Uh, but they're going to go get somebody, man. They proved it time and time again. They identify the weakness. They go solve it. They're, they surprise the shit out of me every single year. They really do. Mm. This, this this Brewers team is, I don't know if you guys remember, I talked about how I was like, I'm not sure about Cleveland's pitching last year. And then they were like the best pitching team in baseball, basically. Sure. Didn't we remember. say the same thing? Or at least I might have said the same thing. And then you guys were like, ah, oh, we've heard like they're pretty happy with their pitching. And now uh, I mean, I, I was All-Stars. I was pumping the tires on the law firm from the start from the TPP and pumping we the tires. Gassing them up, whatever you, you want to say them up. OK, yeah, the law firm. Yeah. And then we, we even said that we had heard from inside the Brewers camp that they were like they were, they were very excited about Freddie Peralta. We did say that. I, so it was I was the one who was like, wow, like I need to see this pitching staff. And well, I've seen them and I like mm. them. Yeah, and then the bullpen helped. They they have they have the playoff makeup. If they trade for a bat, bring back a bat or two. Uh, the Brewers are a good team. That being said, it's really hard. Jake wanted us all to choose a team that's currently not in a playoff spot that we think can be or will be at the end of the year. I'll go first. I I I, I the AL. It's hard for me. It looks locked up. It's hard for me to choose any of those teams and say, yeah, they're going to go get a spot. I mean, even the second wild card. And the NL, I think the wild cards are locked up, but I think the East and the Central might be up for grabs. The only two teams in my mind, I'm interested to see where you guys go, are the Reds or the Phillies. They're the only two teams I think could maybe steal the spot, but I like I like the Brewers and I like the Mets to win. So I, I'm going to go um, Reds, but I don't. But if if I just had to choose a team. Uh, just on the Brewers' record versus over 500 teams being a uh, negative record, and the fact that the Reds can be one game out after three more wins. They just swept them. They sweep them again. They're one game out. But, I mean, I really don't I don't think – I really don't believe that. So I, I, I like the Brewers more. But it's hard to choose a team. Jake, did you did you have one? A couple things. I I think – and, you know, I like – I haven't given this speech a lot. Something I like about the podcast and game is you stumble into stuff, and I think there's a couple main takeaways here. If you're a baseball fan, I think you should be rooting for the Cincinnati Reds. A, if the Reds can make it interesting with the Brewers, they are also the closest wild card team. Uh, they're three and a half out of San Diego. So if San Diego slips up, the Reds can make the Central interesting and the NL wild card interesting. So I think we're all Reds fans. So that's huge news. In the AL, it's the opposite. And, Jim, you love this. We're rooting against the A's, baby. If the A's come back to earth, there's a lot of decent ball clubs in the mix. And, like, like you guys are saying, everything seems fairly locked up. I wouldn't be surprised in two weeks if we're like, well, someone went 10-3 and three and now it's not. I think if I had to throw a dark horse team out there uh, to, to maybe trip up the A's and catch them, what about what's going on in Toronto? We're, we're talking about teams fighting for bullpen pieces and pitching. Toronto Blue Jays, they have their young core. 
So when we did our trade episode on Toronto, uh, I threw Kyle Gibson out there. We love Gibby. We're a Gibby pod. And what it is is, like, they can trade for pieces that can be part of their timeline. Like, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be rentals. If they get Kyle Gibson for the rest of this year and next year, you know, then you say, okay, we, we just penciled in another starting pitcher for next season. Like, they can up their trade package a little bit because they know they're going to have their young core next year. Like, I, I don't think they sell off rental pieces. You have your dude, so I... It's a little optimistic, and hey, I, I think the betting numbers that DraftKings could give you on it, uh, you can make a chunk of change if it happens, but I, I'd circle a team like the Blue Jays. like that, that franchise believes in their team that they should be adding to it no matter what. Um, and you just need the Oakland A's to come back to earth just a little bit, and it becomes very real. You stole my team from Ooh. me. I was going to talk about Toronto. Um, they... Starting pitching's been surprisingly good. They found a guy like Manoa out of nowhere. Uh, not out of nowhere. He's in their system, but he come up, he's coming up and had success. Robbie Ray mm. is this year's Dylan Bundy. He's going crazy, mm. and Ryu has been Ryu. It's the bullpen that needs a little bit of help there. Uh, and I'll, I'll say this, and both teams are just going to prove me wrong, but like the A's and the Rays are kind of in the same boat for me. The Rays, obviously losing Tyler Glass is a huge blow to them. They just keep winning. I don't know how. And the A's seemingly just continue to win. And sometimes I look at that team like, how are you guys winning? So I think either one of those teams could slip and have a – I mean, they're not going to. But just for the sake of this argument, they either one of those teams, it's not like they're like – these powerhouses where you're like at least name recognition or on paper or whatever, like they do find ways to win, but one of those teams can slip the Rays go make a few or the Jays go make a few moves. I could, I could see that happening. I I have them like the Jays with a better chance than the Yankees. Well, I mean, if judges out for two weeks, the Yankees are for these next, that's another whole thing going on now. A COVID freaking bloodbath could be happening throughout the league and that changes everything i the, the, i like what you guys are saying about toronto they just they just don't win in bunches they they only they're they only have one winning streak of more than three games in a row all season and every other team that's in first place or having a good year or on the outs you know can put together a streak there and the blue jays just haven't i i, I don't know if it's because the starting pitching or crazy schedule of moving stadiums, but like, you know, they just don't put together wins. If before, I have a question before the guys. season, if we said who is the best player on the Toronto Blue Jays, who would you have said it was? Vladdy. Not before this season. I would say, I mean, yeah, I would have said Bo Bichette probably. They signed, maybe Marcus they Simeon. signed George Springer to a big boy deal. He's only played 20 mm. games. He's been hurt the whole first half. George Springer is back on that team. He's been hurt. If they can add a little pitching, man, um, and they're going to I mean, be, Gibby seems like a must for them. They're going to be going back to Toronto. That crowd is going to be going bonkers when they get back. There's some juice. They're officially going back to Toronto? I don't think it's official official, but or it actually might be. Like, but when might, I was in Buffalo. Might, ch- might change that with L.A. going back to mandatory masks oh, and and – that pop it up again and all that. I mean, seems like a bad time for a Toronto to open their doors. Things things can change. Go get two, vaccinated. Two my days. Gosh. I'm trying to stay partial on this, but two days gosh. ago, Blue Jays proposed return to Rogers Center, so they're they're like actively working on it. Um. So this is looking at this, and I was thinking this seems like a very low number. The Blue Jays have had 16 saves. All year, mm-hmm. you know that's that's very that's that's fourth from the bottom. Uh, the Giants, on the other hand, thirty three. Like you got to have bullpen up. Yeah, you got to be able to win close games. You have to have that, and they the, the Jays don't. Like Romano has been good, but they need more. Um, if you look at the teams that are like, this is pretty actually this is pretty crazy. Like the leaders in saves right now, Giants. Padres, Red Sox, Dodgers, White Sox, and then Jim Reds, which is fucking surprising to me. How who's 
Who's getting saves for the Reds? I just looked at their page. Guess who is the last player to get a save for the Cincinnati Reds? I if I have no idea. It, I'm serious. I have no idea who's doing this. What I mean, it's not Sims. He got hurt, right? The last player to record a save for the Cincinnati Reds was Heath Embry. Oh, nice. Got six of them. He's having a pretty nice year. So good Peter. for him. Amir Garrett somehow has six saves. He's got a six five one ERA. I mean, their their bullpen's been bad. Actually, I'm I'm corrected. Embry is listed as the closer and got a save on Saturday. Josh Osich, the Southpaw, yeah. got a save on Sunday. He's been doing it. Good for them, man. Josh. Okay. Yeah, so I mean not in your book. No, no. The Jays need some Jays need some bullpen help. They want to make this a, a thing thing. Thang thang. Go get Gibby and Hearn Hunge. Ian Kennedy. Ooh. Ooh. Gibby was upset with you, by the way. You actually texted me. Good. I don't want to bring my phone because I'm going to mess up my I'm microphone. Upset with Jake? He said that you for- yeah, he said he watched your guys' draft thing. Yeah. The trade draft. And he said that uh, you forgot to say that you get double points because he was an all-star. So you didn't give him credit for being an all-star. Who, who did, who did, who did Jake, did you trade Gibby? Trev, why don't you tell Kyle Gibson? I was a little fucked up. I mean, if it wasn't obvious, I don't know. I mean, Jesus, I watched that whole thing. I don't know how you guys did it. I was already sauced. I was, I was at the CAA party by that point, but that's a good episode though. Right. (laughs) Jimmy, I didn't. I only watched the clips. I and and just because Ashlyn's in it, I know it's going to be funny and good. Jimmy's having a little mental warfare because a he knows we were a little twisted up, but b he thinks that's some of the best content we put out. <laughs> Dude, I was well. That's great. I then. said I was going to keep this between Jake and I, mm. but I'll share it. It's pretty douchey. Jake and I are hilarious in that video. We're just we're just throwing darts that no one sees. The whole we're time. having our own show. Yeah, like we're like having a whisper campaign in the middle. Jake's so you guys do that all the time. Do you think that's like unique to that video? It like was on another. It was on, all the time was, together on another level. Jake is so stupid. I'm done. I don't know if you guys have watched the show Dave mm. on Hulu. It's about Little Dicky. Yeah, I like Dave. We talk about we it. Talk on about it a lot. Show. Yeah. Okay. Well, have you guys like seen like what him and Benny Blanco? <laughs> yeah. Do? yeah. Like that's, you guys are him and Benny Blanco. No, that's one hundred percent. Jess was. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? You've seen that my episode. Sweet Jessica was horrified by how much I love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my god. <laughs> yeah. No, that Jake. is that is you and Jake. college so, days used to be similar Jake. to that. I mean, our Jake, us, right us and our buddy Nick, like we entered that world. Jake opened up. Can Trev still hear us? Did he just ditch? I think, I think so. he's got headphones on. I think so. Jake opened up the Chris Rose episode by writing Chris Rose was born without a penis on his note <laughs> and then just sh- and then just showed it to everyone. And it never got I don't think it ever got, no. got it didn't get read aloud. No. I don't think it ever got read aloud, but at one point you show it to Rose. Yeah. And he just looks at it, he's like <laughs> Jesus. I was exploring the space. Yeah. You guys, I heard everything, and you guys are ridiculous. And honestly, I just thought of that comparison, and it's perfect. You and Jake are Little Dicky and Benny Blanco. Hot. Chuck. Don't go watch that unless you want to be like, it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. I obviously think that's what, when he puts his balls on his friend's head? Mm. (laughs) Like, and they really do it. Yeah. It's not just like a suggestion Cares or like, you know, with your buddies. Do you know all of that's true? Like little Dicky really does have holes in his dick. I mean, I, I just assumed it was. Yeah. Um, Which kind of brings us into our all-star game trip, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys both officially chose the Blue Jays. Yeah. As your team. A uh, little kid carrying spike ball up to the beach. Trev, take the Phillies. Well, let's let's share them. Let's each buy half stock. Well, uh, Blue Jays, according to Baseball Reference, forty percent chance to make the postseason. Let's see, the Reds, a little bit under thirty-eight point three. I want to see what the Phillies are. What do you think? I don't know. Baseball Reference has them as the division winner. Um, yeah, thirty-five percent. We can do a little trip recap for those still interested. Uh, the trip was amazing, man. I mean, it was uh, 
we packed so much stuff into it. I, I mean, we can talk about just kind of like not like John Boy Media and talk about the Home Run Derby. The mm. Home Run Derby, I'll paint the scene a little bit. We we all walk in to the Home Run Derby and go to our seats in the bleachers, um, just dead center field. And as we get there, Moylan was next to me, uh, and we were all walking in. Otani hits his BP home run mm. into the fourth deck. And the entire stadium, and it's just BP, it's not the Homer Derby, but the entire stadium just went, oh, 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 everyone. And Peter Moreland turned to me and Jake or whoever else, and he said, oh, my God, this is all baseball fans. Because it was just like a realization that it's not, a, it's not, it wasn't, a crowd of Phillies fans. It wasn't a crowd of Rockies fans. It wasn't a crowd of Yankees fans. Like it was just a crowd of baseball fans and every team was represented and everybody in the stadium was rooting for one singular thing, home runs. There was no oh. booing if this guy won and, and that guy didn't win. Like no one really cared who won at all. I don't think the entire stadium collectively was rooting for the same exact thing. So the vibe of the home run derby is just good time. It's honestly just baseball fans. Just like everyone was as happy as pigs and shit cheering for the same exact thing. So Moylan had like a realization where he was like, this is amazing. Like everyone here's a baseball fan. And I didn't, I knew the home run derby would be fun. I thought it might get boring being there live. Cause I didn't know like how, you know, if they keep, is there, is there in, is there entertainment? Is there music? They pump music. And uh, it's not boring. It was the most. Ex it was the coolest event I've been to in a while. Uh, it's fun on TV. It's ten times more fun being there. So if it ever comes to your town and you have the choice to go to the All Star Game or the Home Run Derby, go to the Home Run Derby. I think so too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. We uh, the the atmosphere was electric. When we got to our seats, that was, I mean, I don't want to give away everything because I know we're doing vlogs and stuff like that. But we got to the seats and I, I kind of quickly decided that I wanted to be up in the concourse. So I ran up there because that's where there was just like, I said it to you guys, it was like a mosh pit up there. When the balls were up, it was like everybody going at it. Um, caught wind of Zach Campbell being there. So I made that kind of my mission to get a ball. That's, I think vlog comes out, out today, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, to watch the video to see if it works out. Trav, put it this way: I, I was giving it my all up there. Trav, we uh, we reviewed some of your concourse footage yesterday, and it's fantastic. Oh, I didn't get to see it, that. It, it is a plus plus. It is fantastic. Uh, so you're incredible. I I think I need I need. No, I know, no, I know, I know. Trev, we we were we were talking no. about it from that way. You'll be fine with this. In you were uh, you were incredible. incredible. I won't give it away, but incredible. Um, the home run derby. I I told a couple of my buddies that asked. I was like, it's a bucket list thing. Like if you're a sports fan, um, you know, like like you said, Jimmy. Obviously, tons of baseball fans in the building, but everyone rooting for it and. You know, the energy you get when a guy hits three in a row, the energy you get uh, when it's coming down the buzzer, the energy when a guy hits one somewhere that balls don't go in that stadium. They were clearing 500 with ease. Easy, and that's, easy, yeah. that's silly. That's silly. So uh, bucket list, I uh, – <laughs> so I threw it – I was planning on watching Yankees Red Sox – uh, canceled. So ESPN just ran back the home run derby. So I was watching it. Seeing our blue line of mischief was awesome. Um, and, and that was fantastic. And so Jess, um, you know, she didn't realize that it was the home run derby event that I was at. She wasn't like watching. Uh, so then when I explained it, I was like, hey, you see that blue line out there? That's, that's us. And she was like, you're re-watching the event? You were at. So she was pretty disappointed. But then the next minute was right when we really got on TV. I'm holding a hot dog, screaming. And she was like, and then she started watching, and she's like, this is pretty fun. And I was like, yes. So uh, Home Run Derby is a must. Um, we've said it a lot, but our um, top to bottom, we were out there with 18 people. 
um, and every single person crushed it. The going away message from uh, Moylan Winger Rose is like, how is no one here an asshole? Like, how is there not one person that you're like, well, well, yeah, and that's when you have to. That's when I look in the mirror, and it's pretty tough. But and you tell Peter to look in the mirror. Yeah, and that's uh, Peter was spreading. He said two people lost their voice on the trip, and. He said to spread a rumor that they were making out late night. Um, so making out with some blunts, yep. Yeah. That's whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah I, it it was incredible. Our <laughs> first giant like big trip, and uh, it was awesome. Yeah. So thanks to everyone. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming. I mean, we played a full game of blitz ball that comes down to the last at bat. Like really, some defensive gems, some really fun stuff. We, Jake and I went to the secret mission seven in the morning. That'll be coming out probably not to, for like a month. Um, we did the front lawn games, which was fun. Uh, silly, stupid. This one shot of Trevor on the tricycle. I've rewatched a million mm. times. You just look so cool, Trev. Uh, and, uh, and then the, the watch party was amazing. So many people came out. So many people that listened to this show and, uh, said hi. And, and, like you know it's amazing so now it was it was really cool i hope we get to do it more uh obviously we're going to grow and the company's going to grow so that that one's going to be like a special place because i mean there's 18 of us and the coolest part was not the coolest part everything was cool but man just hanging out at the house like i know moylan was in the chat earlier so i'm not trying to get too uh romantic on him but peter moylan's awesome and kelsey winger it felt like i was with old high school friends just absolutely belly laughing like belly laughing playing ping pong in the kitchen sitting around outside talking um just the hangout time at the house was cool I and mean, we don't get to do that a lot because we're all remote you know there's uh, uh, you know trev you're you're remote they're remote so that was cool yeah I, I won three games uh peter won one trev beat us both well who was the champion though bdb uh he was playing sober which we don't mm. count you, I was never. I was yeah, never Bill beat me, but he, I mean, he. I took him to extras, and I was had a lot of you stuff lost. going on. Yes, it's fair, Confirmed. Jake. It's basically your if we we're playing zone, your spin zone and the ping pong stuff right now. Well, okay. What if we're playing like backyard football and two people have, you know, cleats on, and then the other guys have wedding shoes? That's what it is. That's your what fault. shoes. Were you guys wearing? I w- in you, this, you don't carry a pair of cleats around with you all the time? I wish I fucking did for mine and Jake's secret mission. Pulled my hamstring. <laughs> I want to say this. I could be in... Well, I know I am in the realm of the Yankees COVID outbreak. Oh, Because Judge yeah. certainly met up with CeCe at some point. They probably crossed paths, right? You have to assume that. And I, me and Cece were rubbing elbows. You think he remembers me? Probably not, but like we were. So I'm, I, I'm vaccinated, but I probably have COVID right now. Hell yeah. Okay. I'm basically part of the Yankees. I mean, Judge and Gio being out. They just they, announced uh, that they're going to play tonight. The Red Sox and Yankees are playing, but I mean. They could use you this weekend, Trev. I do want to say that we met some of the mods in yes. the chat, and that was cool for me. I, you know, I know them by their screen names, but then to put, you know, a face and a personality to them. So we met who? We met Josh. We met Feo, mm-hmm. and then Feo explained to me how he got his name, and it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, Josh, I think, just got named Josh, so that's cool. But uh, that birth. was fun, man. Like. Jim, uh, uh, an interesting comment in the chat uh, when you were talking about ping pong. Uh, BTS Bill, uh, he he responded and he said, wrong. Just I'm wrong. wrong. I'm not wrong. <laughs> he got got, kind of, again. Well, Bill's sober. I think he's twisted. I didn't lose a game on the on ping yeah. pong, so I beat everybody that I played. You beat me and Peter, that. yeah. Playing ghosts. I also beat Matty Mass. Oh, I didn't get to play Matty. Hot. Yeah, he did, he was like pretty upset about it. We got to get a table for wherever we can fit a table on all the new shit that I don't want to talk about because it's not for sure yet. Yeah, next trip everywhere. 
Moylan said that that score, like me and him, it's going to be like a forever thing. The the funny thing about Peter Moylan is our games were incredibly close. Yeah. Like they came down to like the final score and the rallies were long. So we're like the same exact skill. I just had a little more heart and hustle than him, I guess. Uh, yeah. Can we, me and Jake found out a lot of things about Peter Moylan. We had uh, some late much. night talks. Once you get past 2 a.m., like much. that's when the real stuff starts coming out. You know, we had two nights in a row. Two three a.m. nights in a row. That was. I don't, well, you no Trev, were you there for the Eno Saris stuff, the mm. math stuff? I know you were there when he <laughs> came, but Eno Eno came over. And we love Eno, and he was sitting outside in in the backyard in the circle. I wasn't in the circle, but I overheard it. And at one point, Jake was there, and since Eno's a, a analytics guy and a sabermetrics guy, they were just screaming math problems at Eno, yeah. and he was solving them. <laughs> I wasn't there for that, that, but I could see that happening. I mean, I think I remember Eno's hearing a, like a genius. 64 times 7. And Eno was just, and that was like the entertainment. Just He was the math monkey of the circle. <laughs> he's he's smart. I don't, know, I don't know. I think he already put this out on his Twitter so we could, we could say it. He came over to our house on a scooter from downtown. And first he said he got hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit, are you okay?" And then when he explained, he's like, "Actually, I ran into the car." <laughs> no, no, he's. I mean, <laughs> oh. Eno's trying to act like it was his fault, but it it it's not entirely. It's his story to tell. But I don't think. I think the car ran into him, but he feels bad about the placement he was in. He he feels like they had no. Yeah, other, he's on the side. They had no other yeah. option. But he did come over and say, "I just got hit by a car." He he feels like he didn't <laughs> put the car in the best position to succeed. Me and Moylan had to kick someone out of the house. Tag team that pretty well. Trev, do you remember that? Because that was actually a hilarious line yeah. by you. Because, because they you were, got real. There were some negative. There were some negative people real. in there. But you dude, like Jake, that. you should have heard it because Trev's playing ping pong against Moylan, and then someone at the party says, "How could this be an after party when you don't even have music?" And Trev's initial response was to like be nice about it, and you were like, "Hey, hey, yeah, sorry, we're working on it." And then he goes back to ping pong and he has like a, a moment of pause and he goes, but that's a pretty negative attitude and you should change it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Just like, like, hey, wait, that sucked. <laughs> and then me and Moreland had to kick her out to like five minutes later. That was funny. We don't need the negativity. No, I mean, why? Wow, wow. Did we end up playing music? Who was playing music? They, 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 they did eventually like, figure out uh, getting the YouTube on the TV and pulling stuff up. Who needs music? Love that. Jake can say we had a great time, man. Mm. That was fun. It was a lot different than our our uh, spring training trip. I'll say that. Come on. Well, we might be doing another RV trip soon. We'll talk Teaser. <laughs> well, I don't think we're gonna sleep in the RV trip, so don't worry. Okay. I actually want to buy a Sprinter van and then just take out the back row and put a like a little car table in the back. I that love gets. Sprinter vans. I think I think we should go school bus though. Okay. Did you <sighs> did you bigger. see the clip of uh Trev, did you see the clip of Moylan arresting Jake? <laughs> That's good. No. Oh, it's on Twitter. You need to That's find it. Clip. Jake's so That's bad good. at leaving. You put out so much content. So I told Moylan to go carry him out of the bar. And oh, I did see it from the watch party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. I just want to thank everyone for coming. <laughs> I found something I found something out about you on this trip, okay. Jake. It's that you don't mind just lying on disgusting, dirty yeah. floors. Like you'll just like plop down and lie on them. Germs are even if it's at the airport or a, a bar that people have been yeah running Dude, what's in and it out of do? all day. You know? Germs are for worms, Trev. What's it Showers exist, you know. I think there's things it that can't could get do, worse. But, you know. There's there's jobs out there where they stick their arm inside cows' assholes. Yeah. So I mean, what's Jake laying on the ground going to do? Yeah, but you know, Jen, they put a like a plastic over well, not the not, not, raw not, the best, not the best butt. of the best i've got skin <laughs> protect it it's your largest <laughs> organ in your body yeah all right i mean we'll end the episode there yeah. uh tune in for all the content it, i mean uh pray for uh zach editor zach yeah. because the trip ended for us the trip did not end for him he's got a Just lot of hard work to do. It sucks see you guys thank you very much chris rose Rosie's the best. Hot. Chick sucks. Joe's Keith Ashland. Big baby David, the stand and go? Wow. We're the number one fucking show in the world. <laughs>